Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you have your King James Bibles, it's just going to be a quick prayer request video, but I do want to encourage through this. Not through this, but through this. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It says, pray without ceasing. One of the biggest things we need to do, Brother Jesus Christ, is we need to pray a lot more. Uh, first, first Timothy, make sure that you, your prayer life is strong, and we need to pray more. And I've got a, an important prayer request we're going to get to in just a second. First Timothy 2.8. 1 Timothy 2, verse 8. Let's see if I got that right. 2, verse 8. Yes, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. When you come to God in prayer, you're supposed to be sincere. You're supposed to be earnest. Okay, it's not something that you're supposed to doubt. And you should never come to the Lord in anger. Mm -hmm. Make sure you calm down and you come to the, Lord, to the Lord humbling yourself, remembering who He is. He's God Almighty. Remember, there's one meeting between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We go through Jesus Christ to talk to God the Father. Okay. We're supposed to humble ourselves. Uh, Philippians 4 6. Philippians 4 6. Philippians, here it is, 4 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And today I'm making a request. Uh, First, an update prayer request that uh, the Bibles that we've been, that this, I say this ministry, but I'm all, we're all part of Paul's ministry, the Apostle to the Gentiles. We're in the time of the Gentiles, the gospel that was revealed to Paul, the life that we live in Christ Jesus today. Uh, it's Paul's ministry that we're all a part of. We're part of God's ministry through Paul, I'll say it like that. Okay. But my part in the ministry, uh, sending Bibles overseas to people that can't get Bibles where they are. King James Bible, God's perfect written word. Okay, And we've been sending some Bibles. They've been getting there. We've been struggling a little bit lately. I've told stories in other videos about our struggles with the post office, trying to, with my hand shaking and, and not, my handwriting can sometimes be illegible, not readable if I'm writing too fast. Yeah, I try to do really slow, and the slower I go, the more my hand, it's hard. Um, so we've been having some struggles and trying to get packages to them. But the brethren that are overseas, that are doing ministry work, they, they sent me a message this morning, and I want to read it. It says, Hello, brother. We are leaving tomorrow evening on a mini trip to our neighborhood countries for the weekend. Now, these people are in Europe, and the country that they're in is predominantly c Catholic. Okay. So, the countries for the weekend. We are invited to speak about the differences that exist in our country regarding the pre predominant Catholic faith and how we as a family have come to the truth through the word of our Lord. These people have also heard a lot about the King James Bible, but just like here, it is banned and it is difficult to obtain. And I'm trying to help them, and thank you, Brothers Christ, for your prayers. Okay. It really helps out, and if God opens a door for you to help brethren out, either here in the United States or overseas, I pray that you're doing your best to help the brethren out. It is banned and difficult to obtain. We hope with our story to bring clarity to their faith and to be a light in the darkness. Remember, Jesus is supposed to shine through us. What do we hide in our heart? Thy word have I hid in my heart. Okay. Uh, who else? The Holy Spirit comes in. Now we have Jesus in our heart. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Okay. Jesus' light is supposed to shine through us. And that's the prayer request. To pray for this bre these brethren as they're over there. That they can reach people for the truth. They can sow as many seeds. Reach as many people for the truth. And that God's light can shine through. Okay. May they also come to know the true word of our Lord from the true Bible. They've always been engineered to hate the King James Bible, Catholics. They push a hate for the King James Bible. They also put a hate for the this being the final authority. The Babel buildings, the Catholic Church, the hierarchy, they're the final authority. 
they, 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 they have a lot of hard hearts to break through. They're going to plant seeds, but they've got to break through some hard hearts. They've got to break through some traditions, bad traditions, that go against this, that, put, that pit them against the Word of God. Okay. We hope to plant many seeds again and be able to provide the people there with a Bible. We hope for support from our Lord during the weekend and that everything will go well. We will keep you informed of how everything goes. Sincere, the brother and sister in Christ that are they're working hard over there. I want to get this prayer request out ASAP. Brothers of Christ, please, please pray for him. Okay. Uh, I hear, I believe America is pretty much predominantly Catholic and her daughters. Closet Catholic or Catholic? Everything can be traced back to Babylon. Okay, all the different false religions, different denominations, battle buildings, everything. It just seems like they got a lot more in common with the Catholic Church than they do with this book. Than the Jesus of this book. The capital G God of, of the King James Bible. They have more in common with the world than they do this book. Okay. And I understand that, but be, imagine being in a country where you couldn't get a King James Bible. It's coming. I remember just, just talking, I just remembered, um, this was several years back where they were, I can't remember if it was California, it was, a, it was a state where in a county or some area they were trying to pass a law that banned the sales, not the King James Bible completely, but the sale of King James Bibles, that they wouldn't be allowed to be sold there. That's usually the first step. If they can stop this from being, any new Bibles being printed out and sold, if they can stop that, it's usually the first thing they stop. Then that, the last thing they do is round up the last few Bibles and burn them, okay, and get rid of them. But the first step is to try to prevent you from getting a hold of new King James Bibles, putting them out, okay. But imagine that's what they're dealing with. So please pray for those brothers of Christ. I got some scriptures. I'm not going to turn to them, but I just want to read them real quick. Second Timothy one seven. It was encouragement to them, and as I'm encouraging them. Encouraging the brethren that if you're ever put in a position where you're going to go out and you're going to try to preach the truth and preach the King James Bible. Okay. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay. Stay, stand in the faith. Go out with a sure heart. Don't go out doubting. Don't become fearful. I know it's easy, but try not to become fearful. Stand for the Lord and trust God. We did a big study on this. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. In 2 Peter 1, 21, it reads, For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay. My biggest thing when I was newly saved, I didn't have enough of this in my heart. So I was always worried about what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Oh, and I was worried. You have the Holy Spirit in you. That's the first thing. Second thing is, you need to hide this in your heart, brother and sister Christ. Even for the brethren that are overseas. You need to make sure you're hiding this in your heart so when the time comes, through the Holy Spirit, God will give you the right words to say. And half the time, it should be more than half, it should be 80 to 90% of the time, it's scripture that you're quoting. Okay. This is what we hide in our hearts. We have the Holy Spirit in us, and God will help us break through those rocks. And He'll give us the right words to say, Trust the Lord, trust the Lord. Okay. Uh, and 2 Timothy 2 25. Don't let it become conf confrontational. Don't let it become confrontational. 2 Timothy 2 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. A lot of men in ministry have forgotten this. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. It's not, people say, it's not personal in the sense that I don't go out and I'm, and I'm going to get attacked. I'm not going to take it personal. I'm going to praise God. If I get attacked, praise God. If I get name called, praise God. If I have to suffer, praise God that I'm fighting for this book. But some people take, start taking it so personal and they get into fights and debates and arguments and fighting and, fight, and meet and they start becoming a jerk themselves. They start stooping down to the level of the lost world. You know, rewarding evil with evil. But the Bible says we're to overcome evil with good. 
We're supposed to be good. No matter how much evil is being thrown at us, we're supposed to be good. They call us names. We don't turn around and call them names. They mock us. We don't turn around and mock them. Okay? They spit at us. We don't spit at them. They throw stuff at us. We don't throw stuff at them. In meekness, we humble ourselves. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure, through that being meek and instructing through the Word of God, if God peradventure will give them repentance and acknowledgement of the truth. It's not always going to work, but the number one way to reach somebody is meekness. If you come confrontational, they'll put up a wall, they'll put up a shield, and you won't be able to break through that shield. It'll be more like a fight now. And it's a fight you'll never win. Why? Because I'm not, I can't save that person. You can't save that person. Only Jesus Christ can. What are we doing? We're coming in meekness so they'll drop the shield and we plant seeds so that they will go to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of the King James Bible and get truly saved and born again. Find the truth. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, devil who are taken captive by him at his will. The same attitude need to be treated, we need to treat brethren that way, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, as well as the lost world. And as Brother and Sister Christ can be going out and trying to preach to people that are lost, they desperately need to get saved. But even when you're going to correct a brother in Christ, someone who you believe is saved, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You can be firm, you can stand your ground, you can speak with authority, and still be meek. You don't come across as a jerk. You come across as somebody with authority. You can raise your voice when you get frustrated to a point. But don't become a jerk. Don't become like the lost world. Don't become a name caller. Don't become a mocker. Okay. Don't lose your temper right? in meekness. And finally, the last verse, finally, 2 Corinthians 6, 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Right? For he saith, I have heard thee, and a time accepted in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The big push when we preach the gospel is you need to get saved today, not tomorrow. If they don't want to get saved, you planted seeds, you brush the dust off your feet, and you move on to the next city. You move on to the next person. They reject it, move on to the next person. You, what I mean by don't take it personal is you don't get so uh, offended. How dare you not accept the gospel from me? That's not us. That's the Catholic Church trying to be temporal with the physical sword trying to force people to convert or die. That's not us. You want the truth? Here it is. You don't want the truth? Then I'm going to brush the dust off my feet and move on to the next city. I'm going to move on to somebody else that might want the truth. I planted some seeds, I'm moving on. You move on. You don't take it personal. You just preach the truth. What's hard about not taking it personal is that person that you're preaching to, if it's someone you really love and care about. We're supposed to love our brothers and sisters in Christ, and true love for the lost world is preaching the truth to them, the gospel of Jesus Christ, repentance towards God, and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer, ask God to save you. True love for them is that, but when you have people in your life that you really that are close to you, that you really care about and love, and you desperately want to see them saved, it's it's hard not to take it personal sometimes, but you gotta be careful. If they don't want the truth, move on. If you keep beating them over the head with the truth, you're gonna end up pushing them away. Okay, we just preach the truth. Preach like when my daughter's around me, I just preach the truth, preach the truth. When she wasn't around me, I didn't follow her around trying to still beat her with the truth. I just showed her the truth when she was with me. Same thing with all my family members. When they're with me, I preach the truth. When they're off on their own, there's nothing I can do. I don't follow them around beating them over the head. Just when they're around me. My life, this is everything. If they want to be around me, they're going to get some of this, whether they like it or not. That's my life. But today, we preach now is the time to get saved. Okay? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Three, giving no offense in anything. Remember we just read 2 Timothy uh, 2.25 and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves? It says, giving no offense in anything. If you're calling someone names, is that giving offense? If you're mocking someone, is that giving offense? 
If you're attacking someone personally, when you know you're wrong, but you're just attacking someone personally because you want to distract people so they'll start looking at the person's bad things, you know, their struggles with the flesh, their struggles with sin, attacking someone personally, is that offensive? Yeah. You know, give no offense in anything, anything, that the ministry be not blamed. There's some preachers, even on YouTube, that used to be Bible-believing, hardcore Bible-believing, God-fearing men, that the ministry is to be blamed now because they, they've hurt, uh, I want to read it right, giving no offense. They've given offense in a lot of things. They have no problem with name-calling. They have no problem with mocking. They have no problem with backbiting and whispering. They have no problem with bearing false witness. They do it to me. I can do it to them. Don't fall into that, brothers, says Christ. To the ministry, be not blamed. But in all things, all things are proving ourselves. This is the standard. So in all things, you prove yourself. If you're doing something, does the Bible line back you up? Or the Bible says what you're doing is wrong. And you need to stop. But in all things approving ourselves as ministers of God in much patience. I pray that for these brethren that are doing this. That they have patience. And afflictions. They might go through some afflictions. And necessities that they have what they need. I know they can ask me for it. They can, but number one, they need to ask God for it first. But in necessities. In distress. In stripes. I pray they don't have to go through stripes. In imprisonments. So we're praying for in tumults, in labors, that their work, the labor at their hand is fruitful. In watchings, we're praying over them that God will watch over them as they go through this. In fastings, I try to fast once a week. I suggest the brethren try fasting. It's, it's, it's really great. It helps you put the flesh down and focus more on God and His Word and what's important in this world. But in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, like I said, knowledge. If you've got most of this here and here, God's going to give you the words to say. By knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. By kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, true love. These brothers and sisters in Christ and, and the the uh, ministry over there, they're going out and their love is unfeigned. They're not a business. Some of them here in America, just everything's become a business. Religion, organized religion just becomes one big business. They're trying to sell something. They're trying to get money from you. They're trying to get followers. But their love isn't real. Does their love line up with this? Remember, it's action. Love is action. I got uh, attacked... Uh, someone said, no, love is a feeling. Love. No, you want love to be a feeling because you don't want your actions to dictate whether you love someone because your words say, I love you, but your actions say, I hate you. But you don't want to be judged by your actions. You want to be judged by just your words. It's a feeling. No, it's action. Love unfeigned. True love is backed by deeds. The deeds define whether you truly love somebody. Like we talk about loving Jesus Christ. If a man love me, he'll keep my words. Action. True love for God is fearing him and keeping his word. That's true love for God. No, no, it's just a burning in the bosom. That's fake love. That's love that's feigned. It's fake. Love unfeigned. Make sure that you, when you go to preach truth to brothers and brothers and Christ, when you go to preach truth, the gospel of our salvation, when Paul uh, Peter talks about that hope that's get ready to give an answer, the hope that's in you. Okay. Make sure your heart's in the right place. You're not running a business. You're not trying to earn salvation. You know, you're not trying, to, you know, because I'm thinking of like the Jehovah's Witness, they give cards and, and they go around and they, they're doing these good works to merit salvation and they write everything down, everyone that they've preached the, their, their idea of the gospel, which isn't the proper gospel. How they try to preach to people. It's like, no, that's not why we do it. True love is, is, God saved me. I want to see you get saved. God did it for me. And I thought, you think that would be impossible. The wretched man that I was. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? Jesus Christ. 
He saved me. He can save you. And I want to desperately see people get saved and born again. Right? Love unfeigned. Seven, by the word of truth, by the power of God. Okay? A lot of times when I was part of the battle building system, I wish I could hold my finger there. I'm used to a piece of paper here. <laughs> Not here because I'm putting this together real quick. I remember when I was in the battle building system that a lot of times when they preached the gospel to me, they'd, they'd quote John 3.16. But other than that, it was just man's words. By the word of truth. When I teach repentance... It says, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. The sorrows of the world worketh death. There's nothing in this world that's worth you not getting saved. Come to God broken. But God saves such that of a broken and contrite spirit. See, I quote scripture. And then I talk to him. You need to repent. You need to come to God broken and having sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against him. But you back it up with scripture, scripture, scripture. Okay? By the power of God, the Holy Spirit comes in and changes people. Salvation. Right? The power of God, the changed life after salvation. By the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, put on the whole armor of God, the helmet for a hope of salvation. It's not talking about eternal salvation. It's talking about salvation from this life getting caught up in death or getting caught up in life. We're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope every day with the life we're living down here for Jesus Christ. We still have to give an account for our life down here as a saved sinner. That helmet is a hope of salvation. We're looking for that blessed hope. The breastplate of righteousness. We just talked about the light of Jesus Christ shining through us, being ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Uh, feet shod with the preparation of peace, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Given no offense in anything. Okay, We're supposed to be have feet shod with the preparation of peace. We're not supposed to go out starting war. We're not supposed to go out starting confrontation. We're not supposed to go out arguing and fighting and debating and going crazy. We're supposed to be offering the truth. The gospel of salvation. Peacefully. Okay. Feet shod with the preparation of peace. You have the shield of faith. And all in this book, and in God Almighty, He knows what He's doing. Uh, you plant seeds and you give them to God and say, God, I trust you, I believe in you, they're yours now. And you move on to somebody else. I planted some seeds. Faith, the sword, which is the Word of God, and it says girding up the loins with truth. When you're girding up your loins with truth, that truth is still the sword, the word of God, but you're girding up your loins. Like I said, are you hiding this in your heart and living it? Is this what's in here and in here? Or is the world getting in the way? But by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Eight, by honor and dishonor. We need to be honor, honorable. They're going to be dishonorable. By evil report and good report. You're going to have good things said about you. You're going to have bad things said about you. Now, if the bad things are true, you need to repent, forsake, and get your heart right with God. But mainly this is talking about when you go to preach the truth and stand for the truth, you're going to have uh, people say bad things about you and try to tear you down. I've had men, even my mentor, men of God, tear me down, evil report. They'll lie about me. They'll lie about you. They'll bear false witness. They'll hold past sins that you've repented and turned from against you still. They'll, they'll keep bringing up the past. Mistakes you've made in the past. Or invent mistakes you never made. Okay? By evil report. And remember, when we, when we are doing wrong present tense, that Satan's in heaven. Or say, yeah, Satan's in heaven. Uh, I'm trying to remember the verse... Uh, Night and day, he's accusing the brethren night and day. Okay, When you do wrong, Satan's up there. See that? Is that brother correct? Brother? Yeah. He's all about evil reports. Satan's never up there saying, hey, look at the good thing he did. Look at what he did for you because he loves you. No, he's only up there, bad report, evil report, evil report. You're going to have evil reports, you're going to have good reports. I pray the evil reports are false. But regardless, you're going to have to put up with both. When you make a mistake, you're going to have to live with that mistake sometimes. I made some mistakes in my past, and I'm still living with them today. The consequences. Okay. 
But no matter what you've gone through, stand firm to the Word of God. A good report. The okay, Bible talks about having a good report of them that are without, as well as them that are within. When they look at you, the good part is, hey, he doesn't drink. He doesn't get drunk. He loves. He keeps preaching the Bible. He, he's actually a Bible believer. He's a Christian, according to the Scriptures. You know, he doesn't. Do, that's good report, even if it's from without. These people, oh, he, he's no fun. He doesn't like to have fun. Flesh is fun. Fun is flesh. Yeah. As deceivers, and yet true, you're going to be called a deceiver. You're going to be called a heretic. Where this brother and sister Christ are going, they're going to be called a heretic. They're going to be called liars and deceivers. Servants of Satan. That's what the Catholic Church calls us, Bible, King James Bible believers. Be careful not to let it get you down. Stay faithful, stay true. And yet, true. Nine, as unknown and yet well known. Best way to explain that is uh, there's times I've preached truth to people and it's why? Because their heart's hardening, they've got their shield up, and it just deflects the truth, deflects the truth. And they heard it, but they listened, but they didn't hear it. I think if I said it right, they listened, but they didn't hear it. When they drop the shield, and, they, and all of a sudden they're broken, they're ready for the truth, they don't just listen, they actually hear it, and it reaches their heart. Right? Let well known. As dying, there's some people who've had to die for the Word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And behold, we live. We live. Another way to look at this as dying and behold, we live, is you have to die to yourself. So Jesus Christ, the old man died, the old man, did you give the old man to Jesus Christ at the cross? Did you give your life to Jesus Christ at the cross? The old man is dead and buried, the new man is raised, yet we live. But what's that life today? It's in Christ Jesus. We can't forget that. Don't compromise. We're not in the world. We live as chastened and not killed. We learn that in Hebrews how God will chase us as a father would a child out of love to get us back on the right path. As sorrowful yet always rejoicing. It's a sorrowful thing when you see someone you really care about, they're just on their way to hell. But I rejoice that God opened doors for me to at least witness to them, to tell them the truth. And I rejoice every day that God saved me. I could be like them. But Lord, I want to see them get saved like you saved me. But it's up to them. As poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. There's a big fight right now, possessing all things. We're trying to get Bibles, this ministry, part of Paul's ministry, that's God's ministry. We're trying to get Bibles to people that want them overseas. So brothers and sisters Christ, keep praying for, for this ministry. Keep praying for the brethren overseas. And I'm praying for you. Pray for each other when it comes to the endeavor of, to get King James Bibles. Hide them in your heart and to preach the gospel and see people get saved and to live for Jesus Christ. So we're going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Please pray, pray, pray. And I'll see you in the next video.